Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. Do you have a laptop or Ultrabook with an MSATA SSD but you're limited in space and or performance? If that's the case, you might be interested in this product right here. This is the Samsung 840 EVO MSATA SSD. Here's a quick look at the retail box for the 840 EVO MSATA. You do get a three year limited warranty from Samsung, but more to the point, this drive features the same speeds and features that have garnered some really rave reviews for the uh, 2.5 versions of the 840 EVO. You get Samsung's MEX controller and you also get a 19 nanometer Samsung TLC NAND. There's also a little solid state drive uh, warranty statement and user's manual. And then of course inside here you have the drive itself. You also get access to some cool software, so you can use Samsung's SSD Magician software that can uh, do some pretty cool stuff, uh, like accelerating the drive using your uh, installed memory. Um, and then uh, this is drive is also available in 120, 250, 500 gig, as well as one terabyte capacities. This version right here is a 500 gig version, and this will give you up to 500 megabytes, 540 megabytes per second reads, and up to 520 megabytes per second writes. Also, 90,000 plus IOPS performance on 4K reads and writes, and a 1.5 million hour MTBF. It has an MSATA connector down there at the bottom, and this is usually found in thinner laptops and ultrabooks, but you can also find it on some newer desktop motherboards, uh, so you could possibly use this drive in that situa situation as well. Apart from that, you can just see some NAND chips up there at the top. Then flipping over to the back, we have some drive information right there, as well as a serial number, for example. Some more NAND chips, and then underneath there would also be that MEX controller. Next up, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to upgrade this MSATA SSD. I'm going to use the built-in Windows Drive imaging tool. And keep in mind when you're doing this that you could possibly be voiding your manufacturer's warranty from your laptop. So always check with them first just to make sure that uh, you know what you're getting yourself into. But the tools for the job are going to be, of course, uh, the laptop or Ultrabook that you're upgrading. And this is a Samsung ATIV or ATIV Book Lite 915S that we're using right here. Of course, also you'll need the Samsung 840 EVO MSATA SSD. Uh, you will also need an external drive or a flash drive. So I'm just using this little USB 3.0 one right here. Um, make sure that you have at least 64 gigabytes of free space on there. I'd recommend maybe 100 plus. And it's also going to depend on how the uh, size of the drive you're backing up from your uh, laptop or Ultrabook. Um, but again, you will want that. Um, you're going to want an external optical drive, and you will also need optical media. So I have a blank DVD-R right there. And then we have uh, my toolkit, which is iFixit's toolkit, which is very extensive. You, really, you might just need a small screwdriver, maybe a spudger if it comes to that, um, depending, again, on your laptop or Ultrabook. So I'm going to be all set with this particular kit. But again, uh, something you might want to double check as far as disassembly of your particular laptop or, or Ultrabook before you dive in. Finally, I mentioned you will need an optical drive. And since our laptop does not have an optical drive, I'm going to be using an external one. And uh, I know this is a bit of a ghetto solution right here, but this is actually an internal drive with, a, with an adapter. But you can use really any external optical drive that's made for use on laptops or notebooks. So we're going to start off by creating that image of the drive that's already installed on the laptop. So in order to do that, we're going to first connect our externals. So we have our external drive we're going to plug in right over there. Then we also have our external optical drive that we're going to plug in right over here. And then, of course, we should also put our blank DVD into the optical drive tray once it ejects, of course. Now we're using Windows 8 here. You can also do this with Windows 8.1 or Windows 7. But go ahead and open up the Start menu and just type Windows 7. Under Settings, you should find the Windows 7 File Recovery software. Go ahead and open that. And then click Create a System Image, which should be over on the left side. Windows is then going to scan, and it should find your external drive if it's working properly. Go ahead and make sure that external drive is selected if you have multiple drives in the system. It's going to be backing up all of the partitions on your existing operating system drive. Confirm the drive settings, and then click Start Backup, and then go ahead and wait for a few minutes. Actually, the backup process usually takes 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how much data is currently on your operating system drive. When the backup completes, you will be prompted to create a system repair disk. Go ahead and click Yes, choose your DVD rewritable, and uh, then click Create Disk. Your blank disk should already be in that drive. And then just wait a couple minutes for that disk to burn. So now you should have your recovery disk that you've just created, and we're going to be booting from this in just a few moments. Go ahead and label it uh, whatever you feel. I, I said Windows 7, Windows 8 recovery boot disk. And then, of course, we also have our drive here, which has been imaged onto our external drive. Now we get to the fun part, which is taking apart our laptop and swapping out that SSD. So now we begin disassembly, and this is always going to vary depending on the laptop that you're using. Chances are there's going to be a lot of small screws, so it's often nice to set aside a small cup 
or something of that nature so that you can uh, make sure you store all the screws and don't lose any. Also, taking a picture of the layout as you disassemble everything can be very helpful if uh, you think that you might not be able to remember where everything goes. But uh, with all these screws removed, I'm just going to go ahead and ease off the back cover. And again, this is an area where depending on your laptop or Ultrabook, you might need to use the spudger in order to sort of work it free, depending if there's any adhesive back there. Um, but particularly for Ultrabooks or other thin and light form factor laptops like this one, which is actually an AMD-based system, uh, you're going to want to be very careful with that. And uh, again, always refer to your manufacturer's warranty to make sure that you're not doing anything that you shouldn't be. Now we've gotten to the internal of internals of our uh, laptop here. We, we need to locate our MSATA drive. You can use your 840 EVO as a guide. It should look pretty much the same as that one. And uh, that interface right there, which is MSATA, also physically the same as PCIe. So make sure you're not do, finding your, uh, your wireless card because that is something that also might look exactly the same. In our particular case, we have this flat ribbon cable, which is actually right on top of that MSATA drive. So I'm going to be removing that, again, very carefully here. Um, you might have seen me using a metal spudger a second ago, but uh, for this one, I'm going to be using the plastic one because we're dealing with some delicate components. But this one just has a small little flip-up piece right here that releases the ribbon cable, and then I can pull that out very carefully. Remember, these connectors are extremely delicate, so um, just sort of set that off to the side. Then underneath, we can see the MSATA drive that's already installed, just two small screws that hold that down, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove those. Now you notice the drive actually does have some tension on it, so it will pop up by itself, and you can just pull it straight out like that, and go ahead and take your uh, 840 EVO MSATA, install it at about the same angle, pop it down, and then replace those two screws to hold it in place. And that's installed. Now we're just going to go ahead and replace that ribbon cable. And that's pretty much it. Now we can replace the top cover. And of course, replace the screws. So now that the laptop is reassembled, I'm going to go ahead and set up to reinstall our imaged operating system onto the new drive. And for starters, I'm going to plug the power back in. don't know if I mentioned that before, but I unplugged the power before I started this. Also, if you happen to have a laptop with a removable battery, remove it before you did all that stuff before. Um, I forgot to tell you guys that because this laptop doesn't have a removable battery. But uh, apart from plugging in the power, we're going to go ahead and plug our external drive back in, and we're going to plug our optical drive back in. Now we're going to go ahead and boot and let's just see what happens. Now depending on your situation and depending on the laptop you may or may not boot directly from this optical drive. Uh, in some situations you might have to go into the UEFI or the BIOS to tell it to boot off of the optical drive but in this situation because it uh, already tried the optical drives um, and it discovered that it, there was no bootable drive we're going to have to go into the BIOS. So we're going to do that by pressing delete on startup. So first I'm going to shut this back down. So actually on this particular laptop, it wanted me to press F4, and F4 is going to bring us into the uh, recovery options that are available. Okay, so at this point it has found the DVD and it's telling me to press any button, so I pressed the any button. I press the any button again. And now it should uh, be loading up the uh, recovery options off of this optical drive um, where I have the recovery disk installed. So now we've booted up off of that drive and uh, it's going to want us to choose the keyboard layout. We'll go ahead and choose US. And then it's giving us options to troubleshoot or turn off the PC. So we're going to choose troubleshoot. Um, next up we have refresh, reset, or advanced. And since we have a full image to reset from, we're going to go to advanced options. And then from here we should have an option for system image recovery. We created an image on our external drive and we're going to recover from that image. Go ahead and hit enter and it automatically scanned our external drive and it's actually found the recovery that we made just moments ago. Now in the situation where you have multiple backups on there you might want to go in and uh, select a system image but in this particular case I know that's the only one that's on there so I can go ahead and hit enter to go next. Um, here you can also exclude disks and if you have a different laptop that has more drives in there you might want to go in and ahead and exclude those just to make sure that you're not going to format over anything that's already existing. Again, here we only have one drive installed there, so we can click Next. And uh, this is the last step before we go to Finish. I'm just going to tab down to there. 
and hit enter. And it's going to warn you really quick that all disks are going to be reformatted since that's a brand new 840 Evo M SATA in there. There's nothing on it already. Hit enter. And then this is going to take, again, maybe 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the speeds of your optical drive or your media or that sort of thing, depending on how much data is being restored. But once it's finished, you should have your system with the new SSD in there, and it should be in the exact same state as it was when you had your old SSD. So now I've gotten past uh, the step one re-imaging process and now it's going ahead and uh, it's about to reboot. This actually took, uh, it was a little bit faster than I thought. This is only about five minutes that this has taken from when I initially started the restore. And then at this point it will ask if you want to restart and it'll do it automatically or you can just click restart and it should boot straight back into the Windows 8 environment. And there it is. Now let's do one last thing just to make sure because what we did is we imaged off of a drive, um, which I'm sure I left around here somewhere, this drive, which is much smaller than the 500 gig drive that we started out with. So just to make sure everything is set up properly, I'm going to go ahead and um, actually go over here. We're going to right click on my computer and I'm going to go to manage. And this will let us take a look at the installed drive and also its properties because one thing that some folks will do after they've done this is they'll look at the drive and they'll say, hey, I don't actually see that drive showing me all of the storage that I feel like it should have. And that might actually be the case. So as you can see here looking at computer, you have your local disk here and uh, it's only giving me about 100 gigs that it's available, which is the same capacity as the original drive that I've just recently replaced. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump into back into computer management here. So we can see this is our drive. These are some of the extra partitions that it's copied over from that original drive. And then we have a bunch of unallocated space over here, this black bar. And that space that exists on the drive, but if it's not part of a partition, then we can't actually access it and use it. Now you could use some partition management software to switch these around, extend that C partition to give you one big partition, or if you want a quicker solution, or if you just want to have a couple different uh, 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 logical drives to address, you can just create a new partition on this space. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Right click, new partition, go, or a new simple volume, I should say. Just go ahead and click next through here. You can label it something if you want to. So we'll say um, 840 Evo. And click next. It's going to be using all the space. Hit finish. It'll create that partition, which should happen within just a few seconds. And then we'll pop up and we'll see that as another drive connected to the system. So that's done. We'll close that. And it popped up the drive right there for me. And just to show you guys without any other clutter. Uh, so now we have our local disk here. We also have that extra partition, about 350 extra gigs of storage right there. So we can go ahead and use this and we can actually save stuff to here as if it's an extra drive, but it's just the same drive that's separated into two so the, that the uh, operating system seizes as a couple drives. And this is often a good way to do, uh, to s separate your storage and that sort of thing from your actual operating system installation. But apart from that, we're all finished. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been our installation and drive imaging tutorial for the new Samsung 840 Evo MSATA SSD. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave us some feedback down in the feedback section, a comment, or click the like or dislike button, depending on how you feel. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.